This is breaking news from NBC Montana. And we're glad you're staying with us as we continue live at 6.30 a.m. I'm Heidi Miley. In our continuing breaking news coverage of the storm aftermath, more and more people are dealing with damages. I heard a big thump, and it's that big blue spruce laying on the house. Yeah, more homeowners are dealing with trees right on their homes and other destruction. Uh, Brooke and I drove around yesterday, and we have some new video and interviews to show you this morning. Also, the danger continues as power lines fall on roads, vehicles, and even a number of our waterways. And new this morning, a number of new fires uh, erupted around the Polson area in northwest Montana. We've got an update on this one, the Haymaker fire that you're looking at live up in the Mission Mountains. Well, the time is at 6.30 this morning. Temperatures are cool. We're at 41 right now in Kalispell. We're at 55 currently in Bozeman. 46 feet, 48 right now in the Missoula area. Watch and air quality. It is rated as moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups across uh, western Montana with the uh, Bitterroot Valley sitting uh, in that unhealthy for sensitive group range. We're going to see areas of wildfire smoke making their way through as they head throughout the day today on into your weekend. Live look at radar. Not much right now, but a couple isolated showers and storms could pop up today in Southern Gallatin County. Here's your day planner, 70 at noon in Missoula, 85 in that five o'clock hour. Temperatures are pretty close to normal for this time of year. It will be a bit breezy today with gusts up to around 20, maybe 30 miles per hour. For Bozeman, your day planner, right around 70 at lunchtime, mostly sunny skies as we head into that two o'clock hour. Temperatures mid to upper 80s for you this afternoon across Southwest Montana. So breezy wind through the weekend with comfortable temperatures. We heat back up next week. Your 10 day forecast is coming up in the morning sprint. All right, thank you so much, Brooke. New this morning in our breaking news storm coverage, a number of homes had trees fall on them. When Brooke and I drove around yesterday, we drove down Mullen Road toward Frenchtown. A bit west of the Kona Ranch Road intersection, we came upon some homes with trees on them. The residents were out in their yards trying to figure out what to do. I asked if everybody was all right and nobody's hurt. David Todd spoke to us about what happened and what his property looks like. Well, I, I was in the back part of the house last night and I heard a big thump. And uh, I didn't know what it was until today. And it's that big blue spruce laying on the house. <laughs> I'm just hoping there's not a lot of damage to the roof of the house. Yeah, Todd is contacting his insurance adjuster on what next steps need to be done, and he's working to assess his house and property. And then just right across the street along Mullen Road, other homeowners were out with chainsaws, cutting a lot of branches and trying to move them as a number of trees came down on their house, driveway, and along the road where power lines were. The homeowner still had bright spirits, saying that no people, animals, or chickens were hurt. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. It was over in about 20 minutes, but it took down about a half dozen of our big trees. One fell on the house. This, it took down, it sheared off all the cottonwoods, which is a shame because there were a lot of hawks' nests. Yeah, with all the branches down, we couldn't get in close to the house, but trees were lying on it, too. This was the same story for many homes in the county and the city. Now, Bowen West is reporting on the fallout from the storms as thousands still continue, continue to deal with power outages. Yeah, everybody's kind of in a, a hard way. It's not an uncommon story after Wednesday's storm. Virtually every street is dealing with its own crisis. A tree fallen, power line down, sidewalks torn apart. Some lost power in the middle of the night and are still dealing with the outage. I love Montana for the most part. <laughs> I was just a little surprised. Northwestern Energy says tens of thousands of citizens in Missoula lost power. Now the work begins to try to restore it. First priority is to get the transmission lines going and then the distribution lines will come off of those. 
uh, to get those re-energized. Holloway, who oversees disasters with the county, said Northwestern Energy has sent additional crews from other Montana areas as well as contract crews to Missoula to help recover from the storm. Missoula County is saying citizens should conserve water because backup generators are being used to move water around. It takes electricity to pump that water out of the ground. So um, if people can ju just use water, the water they need, that can help the community. Some traffic signals in Missoula have been affected. Drivers should treat these as a four-way stop, slow down, and if people can avoid travel, they should. I asked Holloway if there's any idea how long it will take to return to normal. He said it'll be a lengthy process. You can be assured that crews are working as quickly as they can and as di diligently as they can, but the impacts of this storm were significant and wide, and it's going to take a while to, to get power, full power restoration throughout Missoula County. All right, and now we've got a live look here at Northwestern Energy's uh, power outage map. Uh, we were, uh, I was looking at the extent of this, and it does still extend down to the Bitterroot and out toward Rock Creek and up past our Lee here. Uh, Northwestern Energy says that some who are still without power will likely be without power through the weekend. And there is a center up at the Election Center on Russell where you can go in there and charge your devices, get a shower, and get some air conditioning as well. Now, Brooke and I did drive around for about an hour and 45 minutes, and here's some more of the footage we got uh, with uh, the power lines down and crews up there pulling their buckets up to try to fix them. They remind you to stay 30 feet away from any down or damaged power lines and don't touch anything that's in contact with a power line. The storm also damaged natural gas meters and lines. If you smell natural gas or see a pipeline leak, leave that area and contact officials immediately. Okay, now as far as wildfire coverage, new this morning, we're bringing up a live shot over Flathead Lake where the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Division of Fire is responding to a number of fires. What you're seeing here, that smoke in the distance, that's the Haymaker Fire, six miles southeast of Polson. It's in steep terrain with thick, dense timber. Firefighters were having trouble getting in there. They ordered smoke jumpers and aviation help. Single engine air tanker are assigned to that fire. Now, as you're still looking at this one, I'm updating you on a separate other fires. One is burning out of control. The DNRC reports the Castle Rock Fire, two miles south of McGregor Lake, is burning out of control on 38 acres. A helicopter, tanker, and many ground crews, including firefighters from Marion, are on that one. And crews have good control on the the Lesney Fire near Rollins, the Hubbard Dam Road Fire, and the Garceau and Irvin Flats Fires west of Polson. Also, I'm looking for the latest information from the Lolo National Forest on a new fire start near Missoula. The Fraser Fire is in the Rattlestake Nas National Recreation Area. Uh, a new report shows that it burned probably less than one acre in that range in the Fraser Creek drainage. Resources out there uh, included four helicopters, a hotshot crew, an engine, and an initial attack module. Rangers say that they'll give us a new update this morning, but it looks as though this one is under control. And we are tracking nearly two dozen new fires all across Montana following this severe storm. All these yellow dots on this DNRC map are fires that have just come up within the last 24 hours. If it's red, that means it's a more established fire, and we are monitoring them for updates for you. All right, happening today, Yellowstone National Park rivers and streams will be closing to fishing from 2 to sunrise. The park rangers fear water is too hot and the rivers too low. All this can kill fish. So parts of the Lamar, Yellowstone, Gardner, and Snake rivers will be off limits from 2 to sunrise. But the Madison, Firehole, and Gibbon rivers and their tributaries are fully closed at all times. Geothermal features heavily influence these rivers so they really don't cool off at night. Water temperatures are at or predicted to be hotter than 68 degrees and many river streams and creeks are at historic lows. NBCMontana.com will show you where you can fish in Yellowstone National Park. Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster is standing by so um, some are still dealing with these hot temperatures but others have a cool morning.
Right, definitely kind of a cool start. Nice to have the cooler weather across western Montana, especially uh, with recent events that have been going on. Live look right now in Kalispell. You were breaking records earlier this week with multiple days uh, right around that 100 degree mark. You're at 41 right now. You'll be at 71 by around lunchtime. There is a little haze, but overall not too bad. Air quality is uh, fairly good for you right now in Kalispell. A little different in Missoula, a bit more smoke bit more of a haze out there. Missoula from our Hellgate Plumbing Heating and Cooling weather camera. Live look for us this morning. 48 degrees. We'll be at 61 at 10 a.m. 70 by around lunchtime. We're going to see fluctuating air quality through the weekend and then a big warm up next week. Everything you need to know is coming up in the morning sprint. All right. Thanks, Brooke. Also coming up a bit later, distributors were told sold ground beef with E. coli and started an outbreak that officials say killed one person and infected 13 others in the Flathead Valley. We're trying to get more information from the health department. Also, the Kalispell City Council voted to put a pause on revoking the Flathead Warming Center's permit. Now we're hearing the case that the center is making to the public. Now we've got a live look from our Hellgate plumbing camera up at Snow Bowl above the Missoula Valley. Brooke will have your day planner after the break.